Sometime around 2003, a 20-year-old man suffered a terrible injury. There are two arteries that pass up through the vertebrae of the neck and deliver blood to the brain stem at the base of the skull. Possibly due to an accident or physical trauma to the neck, a flap-like tear formed in the inner lining of this young man's right vertebral artery. Blood entered the wall of the artery, formed a clot, and caused a brainstem stroke that rendered this 20-year-old man unable to walk, control his arms, or intelligibly speak. But while nearly paralyzed, this young man still had full control of his mind. He could think, but his body and voice could no longer obey his commands. Today, AI talks and listens to brains. There's a lot about the brain that we do not understand. But we do know that at a very high level, neurons in the brain consume and emit electrical signals. While it is far from obvious to a human what the brain's electrical outputs mean, our bodies are clearly able to interpret the electrical signals that our neurons produce, and if our nervous systems can suss out the meaning in these signals, then we should be able to devise machine learning algorithms that can do the same. Two recent projects successfully do just that, converting the brain's electrical outputs into written text. In the first study, led by David Moses from Berkeley, the man from the introduction, now 36 years old, imagined speaking words and sentences using a limited vocabulary of 50 words. AI algorithms learned to interpret the resulting electrical signals and produce the intended words with a word error rate of 26%, approaching usability. In the second study, headed by Francis Willett of Stanford, a paralyzed man imagined moving his arm and hand as if he were writing characters on a pad of paper, allowing the participant to produce characters about as fast as an average able-bodied person texts, and with an error rate of just 6%. In both studies, Paralyzed individuals had an electrode array placed directly on the surface of their brain and an electrical connector implanted in their skull. The researchers then literally plug the signals from the participants' brains into a computer using a data cable. Crazy, and I imagine somewhat uncomfortable. Although conducted by completely separate research teams, the two studies used remarkably similar techniques, and the first hurdle they both had to overcome was how to collect training data. Machine learning algorithms identify patterns in data. So to learn to map brain signals into written text, a machine learning algorithm needs examples of brain signals that result from a person imagining speaking or writing specific words or characters. But Libraries of brain signal recordings are hard to come by, and it isn't even clear if brain signals from one person would be useful for interpreting another person's signals. So each team had to record their own data. Importantly, the training data must contain both the electrical signals that are recorded from the brain, as well as knowledge of what text that person was attempting to produce. This implies a tedious process where each participant saw words or characters one at a time on a computer screen, and at a certain cue, like a light turning green, attempted to produce that piece of text. One of the great challenges of modern machine learning is that the algorithms we use are very data inefficient. Where a human can often learn a new concept from a handful of examples, you probably only need this one picture of a kiwano to recognize this fruit in the future. Machine learning algorithms typically need hundreds, thousands, or even millions of examples. 
Clearly, it is not feasible to have a person repeatedly attempt to speak the same word thousands of times. Instead, spread over a few dozen sessions across many months, each team collected about a hundred attempts at producing each word or character, as well as several hundred attempts to speak or write full sentences. Personally, I'm impressed with the participants' willingness to endure even these minimal data collection sessions. Now, it is up to the scientists on each team to leverage the data they have to its maximum effect. The end goal of both teams is to recognize full sentences. But both teams decided to follow the example of modern speech recognition systems and break down the large task of full sentence recognition into the more manageable subtasks of first recognizing smaller units of text, either words or characters, and only then stringing them together to form sentences. To recognize individual units of text, both teams used a type of model that itself was originally inspired by the brain, the artificial neural network. It is ironic that brain signals are being interpreted by machine learning algorithms that are themselves inspired by the brain, but in reality the similarities between a biological brain and an artificial neural network are quite shallow. The brain is orders of magnitude more complex than the largest artificial neural networks around today. All artificial neural networks are built out of individual nodes, which bear a superficial similarity to neurons in the brain. Each node in an artificial neural network consumes multiple numeric inputs and processes those inputs with some combination of arithmetic operations to produce one or more numeric outputs. In a traditional artificial neural network, nodes are arranged in layers. The outputs of each layer are fed only to the inputs of the next layer. The specific type of artificial neural network that both teams built is called a recurrent neural network. Artificial recurrent neural networks interpret time-varying signals by passing the output that is calculated in one time step as an input into the calculations at the next. The act of speaking a word or writing out a character takes time. And so we expect that the brain's electrical activations that command the body to speak or write will also vary through time, and that the brain's electrical signals at one instant will have a direct effect on the signals at the next. The recurrent neural networks that the two teams use differ in some specific details, such as the arrangement of artificial neurons and the inner workings of those nodes. If you'd like to hear more about each team's specific networks, I've posted a version of this episode on my Patreon page that dives into the gory details, but in the big picture, those details are less important than the overarching idea that recurrent neural networks pass information forward through time. The raw brain signals from each participant are represented in the computer as lists of numbers. 30,000 times a second, the electrical potentials at all electrodes in each participant's brain were recorded as a list of real numbers. Lists of numbers are called vectors, and so, as far as the artificial neural networks are concerned, each second of a brain's electrical signals is simply a sequence of 30,000 vectors. Meanwhile, the final output of each team's network is also a vector of numeric scores, where each score in the output vector represents the probability that the input brain signal indicated a particular word or character. In this output vector, for example, the probability score associated with the character B is higher than that for any other. Out of the box, an untrained artificial neural network will produce meaningless random outputs. To learn the correct mapping from inputs to outputs, a learning algorithm must adjust the free parameters of the network. Each free parameter in a neural network governs some part of the arithmetic that the network uses. 
For example, each connection between two network nodes is associated with a weight parameter. Before feeding the output of node A into node B, the network multiplies A's output by the weight parameter associated with the connection between the nodes. Adjusting the weight parameter modifies the final output of the network, and learning algorithms adjust each free parameter so that the final output of the network agrees with the correct value. After training the parameters of its artificial recurrent neural network, the character prediction model is able to transcribe characters in real time with an impressive accuracy of 94.6%. You can have a real text message conversation when only every 20th character is mistyped. Despite the excellent performance that the character model saw, the word prediction team was only able to achieve an accuracy of 47% on their task. Mistranscribing more than half of the words in a sentence will not lead to a useful system. As suspected, part of the problem in the word model is the limited amount of training data. As shown in this graph, as the number of labeled training examples increases, the network's accuracy at predicting words steadily increases as well. Since performance never plateaus, the network's accuracy would surely increase if we gave it more examples to learn from, but the participants in these studies have already maxed out their physical ability to provide labeled training data. We need to find some other way to improve performance using the data we have. In the next episode of AI Talks, we will look at how both teams improve the performance of their systems by leveraging the sequential nature of language. Since you made it all the way to the end of this video, you must enjoy learning about AI, language, and the brain as much as I do. While you probably can't yet command your phone to obey your thoughts, if you'd like to see more episodes on topics like these, please command your hands to poke that subscribe button. And while your brain is at it, why not give this video a thumbs up as well? It would greatly help this channel reach others interested in these topics. Meanwhile, I'll look forward to seeing you in the future when AI talks.